Hello all. Uh, you might remember this little setup from uh, the uh, demonstration on testing uh, split system brushless DC motors. Well, I've had it set up a little more professionally on a, on a trolley here. And uh, I had a question asked to me about this. The uh, question was that um, the motor gets a command voltage to get it to increase or decrease speed, usually between one and six volts DC. And many people didn't actually see that go up that high. Uh, and if we have a look up here, this particular drawing from the manufacturer's um, service manual shows that the rotation command is coming from the PCB sent to the motor as a one to six DC signal. And the motor will send back a tax signal uh, from the rotation pulse input, which will provide it with the right sort of RPM for the speed it's looking for, and then it'll fix that voltage. And we showed that in the other video. Um, again, remember with this particular setup here, and I'll just show you the position signal system. When we turn this motor shaft, we see a chop signal coming back on. Okay, so this is basically the counter. And it's coming back on that one wire. Uh, even with the cheaper um, phase control motors, which are AC based, well, look down here, this one here is a phase control motor. Um, this one's just using a uh, AC um, chopped signal, and it's simply just a split phase motor. So we've got a supply and a negative coming to it, and a wire coming through the yellow one, which goes to the capacitor for the motor because it's split phase, which is located on the indoor PCB. And if we have a look at this particular harness here, this one here has got a red, white and a black wire and the red and black produce a supply voltage just like this one does, usually around 12 volts. And it will send back a tax signal on the white wire using a magnetic pickup, which is located uh, on the back of this motor. Now, these particular units can get into trouble, especially with rotation speeds. Uh, when the rotation signal is interrupted or interfered with, now usually that's when it loses the um, rotation pulse input back and also when uh, some sort of induced voltages can cut through the wiring, especially in the air conditioner's uh, looms and basically interrupt or interfere with that signal. Uh, and that causes some problems, which I'm going to demonstrate for you now. Now I'm gonna do is just turn this on. So I'm gonna turn this on. It's only on a low speed at the moment. So again, I just want to quickly show you, if you look at the command voltage down here, and I'll, I'll just um, turn it on a bit, see if we can get that light on. It doesn't work too well. Okay, you can see it's about two and a half volts. And if I actually increase the, the fan speed, so if I keep increasing the speed, we'll see that it will go up to an eventual maximum high speed, and it's around three odd volts. It's not exactly six, but it's within that one to three range. Over here, you can see the motor spinning. Okay, so the motor is definitely spinning, right? And that's its maximum speed at the moment, with the exception of other modes that might step it up a bit, such as a powerful function. But clearly you can see it's only around three volts here. Now you might remember my little position fail switch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually interrupt the supply back from the motor and I'm going to show you what happens and what the board's going to do in regard to losing the signal. Now we know it brings up a fault, but just watch what happens to this motor and what happens to the command voltage. When it loses the signal, the board will instantly try and increase the voltage to achieve an RPM that it's looking for. So they'll actually get very, very fast. They'll get faster than you would normally ever see. So let's just watch this off. We go to the command voltage, you'll see it's now skyrocketing up. Now this is where you're gonna see this five to six volts appear. And over here, if we look at the motor, it's going absolutely berserk. And this will happen. Now it reached about six odd volts. Uh, it's dropping down a bit and it will eventually cut the motor out. It'll eventually have another go at starting it again. So the motor's just uh, turned off here at the moment. It'll probably start up again or it'll go immediately to a fault, just depends. Um, sometimes it gives it a couple of goes. We'll show that in the last video. But you could see that it, it de definitely rose up and you could see it was getting up around that six odd volts. Now, to be clear on that, here we go, it's starting again. Uh, just watch that voltage skyrocket. Up she goes. Okay, you can see it's going well above that three volts there where its maximum speed was. And we're going right up and we're hitting that six volt, in fact, over six volt margin, but we're not exceeding it. So you can definitely see it gets one to six volts. 
Now what's actually happening here is the motor's actually being sent a higher command voltage to try and achieve an RPM back because the board's not seeing that um, rotation pulse signal come back because I've interrupted it here at the switch. Now this has actually um, been noticed by traders in the past. Many have come up, uh, especially when we've done technical support inquiries uh, and uh, other uh, feedback from uh, other manufacturers say much the same thing, uh, that the Tradies notice that the fan motors go at ridiculous speeds, speeds that they've never seen in the past. And that's exactly what you've just seen here. Uh, if the actual rotation command signal is interrupted, or if it's actually suffering from an induced field. So in some cases, we've seen that if the split systems have been put in rooms which have high EM backgrounds, such as high noise coming from high current uh, devices, or if they're in a plant uh, switch room, for instance, they're cooling a switch room board down, something like that, something where there's a lot of high gain of electromagnetic fields, that poor old uh, 15 volts can get uh, a uh, inducement through the wiring from that and actually send it berserk. And so people go, well, that's not right. So you've got to be careful with that because sometimes when you locate a split somewhere, it's not always a good location for it. And if you are subject to interference like that coming from other sources, this is exactly what's going to happen. You're going to see a speed which is going to be suddenly very, very fast, faster than you would normally expect, and a lot of air and a lot of draft noise coming out of the unit before it stops. If that happens, you can't always exclude the motor. The motor might actually be the issue, especially if you're not getting the rotation pulse input back. If I turn that back on again now, remember that when we turn this motor around, you can see that chop signal coming back, okay? So this is the sort of test that you're doing to prove that the motor is sending back the signal. Um, also, if you've got like harness connections, so if we look over here, you'll see this is a cutaway of another brushless DC motor with all the inputs into it. Okay, this connection here, which is the one that's going on the circuit board, if it's subject to any um, corrosion or dry jointing, even if it's in an environment, say, where you've got um, uh, minerals floating around the place, which can then suddenly attack the board, coastal regions, things like that, um, it can actually create problems of connectivity, and that also can be an issue too. Uh, and this is why you've got to have a look not just at the motor itself, but at the actual the harness. Anyway, you um, saw that. I hope that's been informative for you, and uh, I'll see you all next time.